in this country have experienced the ending of close relationships? This is from a person who's not here on the course and has written in this question. Uh, many of us in this country have experienced the ending of close relationships, whether by divorce or just the ending and breaking of long-term affairs. All too often, the marriage or the relationship ends with lies, accusations, breaking of promises, which make these endings far more destructive and painful. Could you speak on how one can best negotiate the spiritual, emotional, and psychological pitfalls we are all subject to when a relationship ends? So. <coughs> Let the relationship end, because firstly, the relationship was not compatible. It was based more on infatuation. You imagined you loved someone. And really speaking, it was not love at all. Hmm? It was a mutual attraction. That attraction could be physical or mental but there was no compatibility of the spirit. Now, if there's no compatibility of the spirit, then the mental and physical links are broken. In the Western countries, <coughs> people say they fall in love. Hmm? Why do they fall in love? because it is mental and physical. They should be elevated in love if the spiritual element is introduced. Hmm? We have <coughs> some couples here that are married for over 30 years. Hmm? Right? Why? Because they found a spiritual bond. Hmm? So, before any marriage, you first try and find that spiritual bond and then the rest will follow. Mm -hmm. Then you notice the attractiveness, mental or physical. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we have uh, one divorce out of every three is because the attention is riveted on the physical and mental only. You see, you find someone that has similar interests, perhaps, say, music or painting or whatever. Right. And then, of course, they might find each other attractive, but they have not studied within themselves well, what is the cause of the attraction? Hmm? They only look at things from the surface level. Hmm? And the surface level is the mind and body. Hmm? That's all what they look at. Hmm? But if you can peer into the spiritual self of a person, then that bond will never end. Hmm? I personally am married for 37 years, going for 38 years. Hmm? And my wife is not very, very pretty. She's good looking, okay, fine. Hmm? She's not very pretty. But yet the bond is so great right, that she would allow me to travel around the world eight months a year teaching. Hmm? Because of her, spirituality. <coughs> hmm? But if the bond was only on the mental and physical level, she would not allow me to travel three quarters of the year around the world. You see. So the main quality that is required to preserve the relationship is uh, the spiritual quality. Hmm? And if the spiritual quality is not there, then sooner or later, that relationship will break. Now, 
if a relationship is broken, what must you do? Hmm? Right. Firstly, you will suffer because the infatuation has been severed. Hmm? Because you have become dependent <coughs> upon the person's <coughs> mind and body. Hmm? Many people are together just because of the physical selves hmm? that enjoy each other. Hmm? And then a time comes when you get tired of that physical relationship. Hmm? You get tired of it. And then what happens? <coughs> you try and look for new pastures. That brings a greater ridge or a gap in the relationship. So naturally, that relationship will not last. But if you find that spiritual oneness through spiritual practices, hmm, then there will be no gap whatsoever. Hmm? You will not have hatred, you will not have anger, you will not fight, but you will just love. And that is the meaning of real love in totality. Hmm? Total love means to be able to combine mind, body and spirit. But the dominant factor must always be the spiritual self and not the physical self. Hmm? I know of couples that live together, married or not, and they are just dependent upon each other for sexual release. Hmm? Now, do you call that love? It is not love. The relationship that breaks up is because of lust and not love. Hmm? Just because of surface attraction hmm? and not inner attraction. Hmm? How many times have you made love to your wife where you have just melted away? No. Very few can do that. Hmm? Your mind is not on your wife at all in quietus. Your mind is upon yourself so that you could find the maximum pleasure out of it. Hmm? You call that love? That is not love. Hmm? So, how can it be total? Hmm? Your attention should be more on the spiritual self of your spouse rather than on his or her body. Because uh, in coitus, your attention is rooted to your self-gratification. Hmm? How can you call that love? That is not love. Hmm? So to find the totality of love, these things which I've spoken about has to be combined. Uh, hmm? Yes. And it is the combination of mind, body and spirit that brings the totality. For body, mind and spirit is one continuum. But you break it into pieces. Hmm? So, self-gratification. What does that mean? What is self-gratification? Hmm? It means nothing at all. Hmm? It is just using it as other biological functions that one performs. Hmm? 
you are hungry today, so you eat. And in a few hours time, you feel hungry again, so you eat again. Right. What are you doing there is just appeasing your appetite. As you would appease your appetite in the so-called love-making. So, how can that kind of appeasement be called love? Hmm? So, <coughs> it is only through the understanding of one's true self, one's true inner self, that you will start understanding the inner self of your spouse and then both merge. And when they merge, the relationships can never break. Hmm? Relationship. Huh? What are you relating to? Hmm? What ship are you relating to in your relationship? Hmm? The ship of self-gratification? Huh? Hmm? Is that very important? What about the propeller or the hull? Is that what you call it? The hull? Huh? Without that hull, that ship will flounder on the waters. And that is how people live their lives. But if the propeller or the hull or the hull is put into proper shape, the ship can be controlled in whichever direction you want to control it. Do you see? So, the emphasis should be on the spiritual self of your spouse. Is to realize the factor that he or she is divine and I am loving the divinity and not the body or the mind. And when you start realizing that, gaining this understanding that I love the divinity within you, then anything else would not matter. Hmm? I was telling my beloved that God forbid, but if you get involved in an accident and get lamed or shriveled or burnt, I will still love you just as much because I do not love your body. Hmm? Your body, of course, has a purpose for procreation, nothing wrong with that. Hmm? Biological factors are needed in life, nothing wrong with that, but the emphasis should be on the hull of the ship to have a proper relationship. Yeah. So, as soon as you start realizing that I'm loving the divinity within you, which is God, uh, then you put God first, and the rest comes afterwards. What do you see? Now, if you find and realize to yourself that the kingdom of heaven is within, then you will find that kingdom of heaven in your spouse as well, because it's only one kingdom. There's no separation. Because people don't realize these factors, the relationship breaks, and they do not find the totality of love. Do you see? Hmm? To find the totality of love, you yourself must become total. Hmm? And you get gas here called total. Hmm? We'll get that brand in South Africa. Hmm? It's a very powerful gas, high octane. Hmm? Use high octane. Hmm? and not the lower grades of 
what do you call it, leaded petrol or something, leaded gas, uh, the weaker one, regular. Hmm? regular. Uh, yes. <coughs> Why use the regular gas of the mind and body? Hmm? Use that total high octane gas first, and you see how smoothly your car will run and how fast it can go. It has got power. Relationships of today are powerless hmm? because they are based on a wrong precept. Get your priorities right, and then the relationship will never break. Hmm? So, we lose our priorities. Hmm? We put the uh, cart before the horse, hmm? and then we expect the cart to move. Hmm? No. Put the cart in front. The cart of God. The, 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 the horse in front. The horse of divinity. And you see it will lead your cart beautifully well. Hmm? So that is why these are the teachings we give in our organization. That find that divine quality in you first, and you can find it through your meditations and spiritual practices. Mm. And I see so much progress in all the meditators have been meditating for a few years. Mm. The faces become so gentle, so kind, so understanding. Mm. And I found also one thing, that people have become so, so much more creative. Hmm? Right. People that couldn't write two words hmm, sent to me the most beautiful, sublime poetry. Hmm? And people that couldn't draw two lines straight create beautiful paintings, and they send me photographs of it. Hmm? So, creativity and love is forever creating. Hmm? I read an article in Psychology Today, a few years ago, where they were discussing some other movement, and through their research, um, they found that people were becoming less creative. Right. Well, in our movement, people are becoming more and more creative. Hmm? In everything. You see. It depends upon the power of your practices with the power that the Guru instills that brings about greater creativity. Do you see? Now, love is forever creative. The more creative you become, the greater will be the opening of the heart area. And that is where love stems from, not from your beautiful faces. Huh? or your brilliant brain. Mm. Stupid. Mm. Uneducated. Right. You can be ugly. But you can be very beautiful inside. I know one woman <coughs> who is so plain looking that you would not even hire her as a servant in the house. Hmm? Well, here in America it's difficult to get servants because it's so expensive. While in South Africa you can get a maid for 30 bucks a month. 
with different standards of living, of course. Well, there the income is less, and of course the expenditure in proportion. Hmm? Here the street sweeper will get $2,000 a month, while in South Africa you would get $50 a month. Hmm? Right. So, this maid we have is a way she would polish the furniture, for example, or dust the floors, vacuum, you call it hoover. Hmm? Hoovering the floors? Vacuum. 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 Oh, in England they call it hoover. Mm, right. But she does it with so much devotion hmm? that she becomes one with the vacuum cleaner and she become one, becomes one with the carpet. Hmm? Do you see? Do you see the development? Things must rub off. Well, she's working for us for 20 years now. Lena, if met Lena, if met Lena. Right. Now this woman that I was talking about, very, very plain looking, but if you sit near her, mm. it just brings a joy into your heart because she's emanating that something from her heart. Mm. And you would not like to leave her company. Do you see? That is how relationships are maintained, through heart quality. Mm. And as I said earlier, that love is always creative, love is forever flowering. Hmm? If a boy meets a girl and say, oh, I fell in love huh? in five minutes, don't believe it. It is a growth process where the two so-called souls slowly start growing and they start merging in each other and then you find the totality of love. Hmm? Yes. You find that oneness. There's no separation. In today's marriages in the West, there's more separation, although they are, you know, lovey-dovey. Hmm? And they're close to each other and hold each other's hands or hug each other. But there's a separation. There's no oneness. It is farce. It is farcical. Hmm? And that is why they break up. Do you say? In other words, they're playing games. Childish games. That's what they're doing. And naturally, you know what children are? Hmm? They play now together and later on they'll start fighting. Hmm? And the friendships break up, the relationships break up, you see. So that is not total love. Totality begins from inside. People say to each other, one spouse to another, that I love you with all my heart the biggest bloody lie. What do they know about the heart? To say, I love you with all my heart. Yes, they can say, I love you with my imagination. That would be true. Yes, eh? So, when love is imaginary, then naturally there comes a time when relationships will break up. You see. So, to really love someone in totality, imagination is not necessary. Mm. Outer beauty is not necessary. Mm. For the word imaginary, what is the origin of the word imaginary? Image making. Mm? Image making. So, 
you have an image of an ideal. Hmm? Right, and you might find someone similar to the ideal you have in mind. <coughs> but where does the ideal come from? All idealization comes from the mind and not from the heart. Hmm? So you are not loving the man or the woman. You are loving your personal conception of your own ideal. Hmm? So when your spouse does not meet up you know, after the infatuation diminishes and your, your ideal is not met up with, naturally, the relationships break. Hmm? Now, when a relationship is broken, what do you do? Hmm? You don't mope. You don't cry your eyes out. You would only start crying. You will only start crying because your ideal has not been fulfilled, not because of the breaking of the relationship. What do you say? Say a husband and wife. God forbid the husband dies and you find the wife crying. Hmm? She is not crying because the husband is dead. Hmm? She's crying because of her own personal security. Who's going to look after me? Hmm? What am I going to do? Hmm? And that is how it works with breaking up of relationships too. Hmm? Most people cry not because of the deceased one, but because of themselves. Hmm? So the totality of love begins within oneself. Find that bit of totality and merge it with the person that you are attracted to. Hmm? And then that relationship will forever last. Hmm? <coughs> and it will not only last in this lifetime, hmm? but it will carry on in your next lifetime as well, if your spiritual bond is strong enough. Do you say? If the spiritual bond is strong enough, you will meet again from different corners of the world. Hmm? Someone, it, it is an inevitable law that when there is that deep spiritual bond, you must definitely meet again. Hmm? You could be living in Alaska and I could be living in South Africa, but yet somehow you will meet up. Yes, sir. That always happens. It's inevitable. Hmm? As I said before, physical links can be broken, mental links can be broken, but the spiritual link, the spiritual oneness, can never be broken because there's only one spirit. So what is there to break? Yeah? There's nothing to break. Hmm? Right.